Hello. Let me get my camera sorted. Hello. Super, super exciting to be here with you today. I am here with you. I'm going to be spending probably the next 40 minutes or so with you, talking you through a very generic, the very generic uh, basics of human design, particularly how to understand a chart. You are here because you have joined the Projector in Business Micromind. So this um, introduction to reading a human design chart is going to be specifically focused on projector chart so that you can, uh, firstly, when you receive your pre-recorded reading from me, you're going to have that real foundation level learning already down pat. And secondly, so that you can start to really increase your own understanding and your own learning journey of human design. So um, I'm so excited to have you. We're going to have an incredible 10 days together, kicked off on Monday, uh, Monday the 20th, I believe. Um, we're going to be obviously meeting in Zoom, not Zoom. We're going to be meeting in Voxer. And yeah, I've got an amazing 10 days planned for you. But this video is going to really form the foundation upon which we do everything. So it's really important that you watch the whole thing um, and preferably that you watch this before you watch your own human design reading, it's just going to land a lot more clearly and powerfully for you. And yeah, it's, it's important to have the basics down. So the idea is that your nervous system can start to understand the concept, the very basic and fundamental concepts behind human design. I will say if this is the first time you are engaging in this conversation and this experiment with human design, then please go gently and go easy because it is a large body of work. It is a scientific system and I, it's taken me six months to really get to the point where I have wrapped my head around the core concept, right? Like it took me six months to really get my head around it and to really embody it at that deep level. So it might feel initially like it's a lot to take on. You might initially be quite overwhelmed. Uh, if that's the case, you're going to have plenty of time. And my intention is that by the end of our time together inside this micromind, your nervous system is going to be totally all over the basics of human design, right? That's why I've done it this way, where we have an extended period of time together, a short but extended period of time, right? Because we really want to start feeling into these concepts and, and not just have them be concepts, actually start to bring this experiment, which it is, down into tangible reality. And throughout the 10 days together in Voxer, I'm going to be asking you to truly experiment with your human design. And that experimentation really, like you're going to get so much out of it if you continue that experimentation phase on. So human design is an experiment. And when we really have that energy of being curious, playing, testing, trying, experimenting, I think the word that comes to mind for me is light curiosity. We don't want to get too heavy. We don't want to get too serious. But we want to learn to start playing on the edges of our human design and watch with light curiosity and fascination as things start to shift and change for us. So the more you understand your design, the more you align with your design, the more you play with and experiment with your design, the more it's going to embody within you and the less you're going to be encountering resistance in your life. <clears throat> so resistance typically comes when we are flowing against the natural flow, when we're moving against the natural flow of energy, right? If you think about trying to uh, run up a very, or swim up a very full, very fast river, it's almost impossible, right? Because the current is going to overpower us. And that can often, we can often experience phases in life where we are swimming proverbially up, we are swimming up the proverbial river going against the current, right? What I've come to understand is my own experimentation with human design and coaching my clients through human design now is that the energetic integrity of your design or the energetic nuances of your design can very much be like the current of life, right? So when we're working with those energetic cadences, for want of a better word, we are we are flowing with the least resistance. We are moving through life with the least resistance. When we're moving against those currents, that energetic current, we are moving against the natural rhythm of the universe. So we're moving with more resistance. When I first discovered this, 
bing, it was like a light bulb went off for me. It was incredibly powerful. And what I love so much about human design is the fact that it's brought me back into my playful, lighthearted, open-minded state of mind that I had for quite a while that I had lost, that I'd lost touch with, that had gotten very serious about life. Um, and really bringing that playful energy in and experimenting so that we can find the path of least resistance, that path where I love the, the uh, metaphor slipping into the slipstream, you know, the law of attraction engages, synchronicity start flying in, you start feeling magnetic, you think of something and it happens. That is very much available for every single one of us when we are in alignment with life. Now I understand being in alignment with life also looks and sounds like being in alignment with your design. I'm so excited to be spending this time with you over the next um, two weeks. I'm recording this on a Thursday the 16th. So, yeah, it'll be just over two weeks before we finish our, our time together. Um, and I'm really excited to see what opens up for you and to see the, the shifts that you start to experience in your life when you start, you know, really working with the energetic with your energetics and with the energetics of the universe. So you are here because you are a projector. Now, you may or may not have a comprehension of what that means. Most of you have seen me marketing this program and have resonated with what I've been saying and, you know, really following along with the education that I've been doing over the last couple of weeks which is fantastic because that's why you're here. You've resonated with it, you've enjoyed the content and you're keen and ready to start exploring more. So being a projector means that you're only 20% of the population and you are a 20% part of the population that's been born into a world that doesn't necessarily support your energetic. That being said, what I'm going to teach you over the, over our, throughout our time together is going to, are going to be, it's going to be full of hacks life hacks, energetic hacks that you can employ to really start to discover your place in the world. So being only 20% of the population, that means that the majority of people who live on this planet are wired incredibly differently to you. And what I've noticed through working with a lot of projectors now is that there is a great projector wound. And that wound is they're born into a world that doesn't necessarily, that doesn't have the structures to support projectors. Meaning, 70 odd percent of the population are generators and manifesting generators who are wired incredibly differently. And I'm going to talk you, talk you through what that actually means. So I'm going to share my screen. I have, um, I have your charts here and I'm going to start going through them one by one so that you can start to understand a little bit more about human design and what it actually means when you're looking at this chart here. So this is Kirsty. Kirsty, we're going to start with you. Um, and of course, like when you first open up your chart, it can be like, what is this all about, right? Doesn't make any sense. So I'm going to walk you through the very basic fundamentals. First things first, being a projector means that you are a non-sacral being. That is the primary thing that determines whether you are a projector or not. So what does that mean? Through this chart here, you can see there are nine different centers, okay? The, the whole human design system is like a conglomeration or a, a combination of astrology, the chakra system, the I Ching, the Chinese I Ching, the Book of Changes, the Kabbalah, the uh, Hebrew Kabbalah, and it's all been kind of brought together and synthesized into a modern-day body of system, a modern day system and body of work, body of knowledge. So when we're looking at a human design chart here, the first thing we notice might be that there are seven different centers, sorry, nine different centers, and they correspond to the seven chakras plus two. Now, they're slightly different to the chakras as you might understand them in the, in the Hindu tradition of being kind of adapted and, and evolved. I'm going to go through this. We have the crown. We have the Ajna or the third eye. We have the throat. We have the solar plexus. We have the sacral. We have the, the root. Now they are, oh, and the heart or the will. They are the seven that we are very familiar with. 
but human design also has two more. This here is called the G center. It's the identity center. And this here is the spleen center, okay? So I'm gonna go through in a moment and talk about what these mean. Talk about what, what it means if they're colored or not colored. I'm gonna talk about what these numbers are here, what these numbers are here, what this number is down here with this flash in the middle and, uh, and what actually are the different types of projectors, okay? So first things first, your human design chart is taken from your birthday and your time and location of birth, very similar to a natal astrological chart. And there's a lot of theories about why and how that happens. Ra Ura Ra, the man who channeled this body of work uh, back in the 80s, I believe, or it might have even been the 70s, he talks about the neutrino imprint. And I'm not going to get into that because it's actually, there's a lot of very, very dense quantum theory that goes into this. So, but essentially the idea is that neutrinos are tiny, 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 tiny particles of matter that are emitted from the sun. And at any point in time, we're actually surrounded by tens upon tens of thousands of neutrinos, might even be millions of neutrinos all at the same time. And when a person is born, when they actually enter into physical 3D Earth, you know, Earth territory, their, their neutrino imprint at that precise moment that they are born is what tells us what's happening in the, in the solar system at that precise time when that person is born. They, they are marked with the neutrino imprint. So if you can see here, there's two different sides. Now, if you know much about astrology, you'll, you'll see that these are the astrological symbols for the different planets. And we have a couple of the, you know, the North and South Node and um, no, none of the, the um, <clears throat> okay, excuse me. <laughs> so the important thing to note here is the reason why there are two different sides with two different colors. What's very powerful about human design is that we're given a conscious, list of human design features that make us up and an unconscious list so the conscious list here so for Kirsty, she is her son this is the sign of the sun is in the is in the gate what we call in human design gate the gate the eighth gate now gene key very much the same okay except instead of it being called a gate it's called a gene key so for Kirsty. Her son is in the eighth gate. That also corresponds to her life work in the gene key. So her life work is gene key eight. This is the imprint as was determined by her birthday, right? The exact time that she was born and imprinted, incarnated into human form out, out of the womb onto terrestrial land. The date that is taken to give these numbers out is three months, exactly three months before Kirsty's birthday. And the reason why they do this is because three months before is when, according to the human design system, the soul incarnates into the body. And when the soul incarnates into the body, it brings with it all the ancestral, all of the interlife, all of the past life information and incarnates into the body in the womb three months prior with that level of unconscious awareness. So we can always see here the conscious side and the unconscious side. This correlates with the colours of the, the centres, the gates and the channels. So for Kirsty, her crown, her head is unconscious according to this, right? It's this colour, it's the orange colour. So all of the, the, le the, the gates that show up for her, these gates here, can I move that up? Yep. These gates here that show up for Kirsty all show up in her in the unconscious side of her personality, of her of her um, body graph. Okay, here in the identity center, in the identity center, the G center, this is conscious, and we know this because these gates will show up for Kirsty in the in the conscious side of her body graph. Okay, um, sorry, that's the throat. It's not the G center. My apologies. So it's very, it can be very interesting to have a look at it from this perspective because obviously when something is conscious, we are fully aware of it. It is there in our conscious mind. When it is unconscious, it is 
stored, locked away deep in the subconscious basement. And it might be patterns of behavior that we, or attributes that we don't know that we have, right? And if you go further into the gene keys, where, we, where they have the shadow and the gift, very, very interesting to look at the shadows contained inside your unconscious personality, right? Because those shadows very much is the case that the shadow is generally uncon in the unconscious basement until we bring it to light and it takes time to really for us to really be able to see this. So if there is if there are two colors, that means it is both a channel that is or a gate that is both conscious and unconscious at the same time. Okay. So Kirsty, her life work or her son is in is in gate eight. In, uh, in human design, we say this is the moon that is in gate 30, okay? But in Gene Keys, that's a different... Sorry, this is her unconscious from my apologies. Um, and then Earth, the uh, her Earth is in gate 14 consciously. Unconscious Earth is in gate 29. I'm not going to go too much into the Gene Keys throughout, the, throughout our time together because that adds on a whole different layer of information. I'll be doing a lot of Gene Keys work in Vosta in the coming months. So if you're interested in that, definitely stay tuned. Okay, so we can see here that Kirsty is a projector because she has, her sacral center is not defined. <laughs> Excuse me. So this is the sacral center, okay? And this is the number one thing that makes you a projector. Whether or not you have a defined or an undefined sacral means you're either not a projector or you are a projector. All projectors are non-sacral beings. Excuse me, my apologies. Now, this is important because the sacral center is one of the motor centers, okay? Along with three of the other centers, I'm going to go through that in a sec. They are the motor centers, which means they, it is an energy center. It's what gives us fuel. It's what gives us energy. So being a non-sacral being means that you're not like the generators or the manifesting generators, like I said. And because of this reason you're not like them is because they have defined cycles and you don't, which means that your energy, you have inconsistent access to energy. It means it comes and it goes. You have big peaks and troughs naturally in your energy. Guys, I'm going to have to pause you. I get some water. Just give me one sec. My apologies. Okay, let's keep going. Okay, so like I was talking about being a projector means that you are a non-sacral being. Now, the difference, I'm going to talk now about why some are coloured, some of these centres are coloured and some of them are not coloured in because this is a very important part of understanding your specifics about your design. When a centre is coloured, it means it, it is defined. When it is not coloured, it means it is not defined. Okay, so we can see here, not defined. You can see here, not defined. You can see here, defined. Okay. What does that mean? Definition, meaning there is the center has a color, is colored in, means that you have consistent access to energy in that particular center. So for example, Kirsty, you have a defined head. And if you have a defined head, it also means you have a defined Ajna because Definition is created when two gates are linked together, okay? So here, so we can say that this gate is defined because it is linked to the Ajna. Now, if you have a defined head, you will always also have a defined Ajna. We can see that this gate here is linked to the G center, which means it is defined, right? We can see that Kirsty's root is connected to her sacral, her solar plexus, which means that those two centers being, those gates being active means that both of those centers are defined. When a gate, when a center is not defined is when there are no other there's gates, we can have gates active inside of a center. So Kirsty, you've got the 29 and the 14 active inside your sacral. But because it's not actually defined, is the reason why it's not defined is because it is not connected either to the root, to the spleen, to the solar plexus, or to the G center. Okay. <clears throat> so definition means that if you have a center that is defined, it means you have consistent access to 
to your own individual energy inside that center. It means there's definition in that center and it's your energy. It is your personal individualized energy. If it's undefined or if it's open, if it's open, it means that there are no active gates whatsoever inside of um, that center. And so that means it's purely open versus undefined, which means that it is white, but there are still some, some gates that are defined that have access to energy there. If it is undefined or open, it means that you don't have consistent access to energy in that particular center. Now, the golden rule of thumb in business is that we typically teach and sell from our definition. We teach, sell, and coach from our definition. Meaning when we have access to defined energy in that space, it's like it's a core part of, of what makes us, of what brings us definition, of what brings us solidity inside our individuality. The open centers typically are where we hold space and mentor from. So in your open centers, you are reflecting, you are taking on absorbing and reflecting back the energy of the people in your environment that have definition in that center. So the reason why projectors typically have big bursts of energy and then and then it can have a big crash of energy is because when you are a sacredly defined being, so whether it's a, a manifesting generator or a generator, which make up nearly 70 odd percent of the population, you're effectively piggybacking off their sacral definition. Their definition, their, their access to define sacral energy, which is what is like one of the motor centers that fuels the energy of the body. <clears throat> it also means that when you are not around anyone who has who, who is a sacral being, that your energy will naturally start to lessen. It will start to drop. It will start to tip off. You'll find yourself becoming a lot more sensitive, a lot more inward, a lot slower. And one of the greatest wounds, like I said, is that projectors are born into a world that doesn't actively support the way their energy flows, fluxes and flows. So I've heard a number of my clients say, I thought there was something wrong with me, that I couldn't keep up with everyone else, that I wasn't like everyone else. And when, when they learned about their projector individuality, they realized, actually, I'm not, I'm not meant to be like everybody else and I'm not designed to be like everyone else. I'm a non stateful being, which means that I have to actively recharge, reboot and re-energize my energy. Now, this is something we're going to be talking about a lot because there's often a lot of deconditioning that we need to do inside of the open centers, okay, or undefined centers. We need to decondition in the centers that are white because it is in those centers that we've taken on the imprint or the belief or the conditioning from either society at large, from our family members, our parents, our ancestors, from our friends, from people who we're surrounded by. You know, they say you are you you are the the is it, I'm gonna butcher it, you're the median of the five people you spend the most time around. You're the average, sorry, of the five people you spend the most time around. <clears throat> and that is very much the case in a, from a human design perspective because we energetically are picking up through our open centers. Now, I also heard the other day, and I love this, that your open centers are your, are your portals to God or your portals to the universe because in those centers, you, have, you don't have access to your own defined energy. You are an open portal to the world at large as it moves through that center. So for Kirsty, her will, okay, her ego center here, the heart, which is also called the, the ego center, means that she's open in that. She can, she's much more sensitive to other people who have definition in that area. But it also means that she's much more intuitive in that area. She holds space through that area, through that center. The same is true here, the spleen which is the, um, the sacral, sorry, which is the intuition. It houses the intuition. It also houses the, um, like the primal instincts, right? It's very much very similar when it comes to human design. And then the sacral, of course, as well. 
So our open centres are very, very powerful. Where with the closed or, or the defined centres, we have our own access, we have our own definition. It's like we know who we are inside of that centre. In the open centres, we can sometimes be a bit more like a chameleon in that centre. We can reflect or adapt to the people that we are around. We kind of energetically piggyback or sense or intuit what's happening for other people in their in the definition of the centres they have defined that we have open. Let me know if that lands or if there's confusion there. So this is one of the core concepts of human design. And when we really start to understand about our definition and about our, our undefinition or non-definition or openness, we really start to, it, it, this map becomes a, or this body graph becomes a map that we can actually start to read, right? So inside of all of the centers, you can see there are numbers. These numbers are connected. They're the 64 gates also called the 64 gene keys, also called the 64 I Ching. So that they're, they're connected to the I Ching, 64 I Ching, the Book of Changes. Very, very ancient divination tool that was formulated by the ancient Chinese. I believe it's about six or 7,000 years old. <clears throat> the gates, in human design we call them the gates, are connected to different heads, to different centers, okay? So for example, the 64, the 61, and the 63, are all in the head center, right? And when we dive into the meaning of those gates, they're very much to do with the mind, right? With taking in information, with finding clarity, with dealing with confusion. So too with the Ajna, which is the third eye, our ability to take in information from the field or information that we have deciphered of our own and process it right? Actually turn it into a vision, understand it mentally, be cognizant of what that means. We move down into the throat center where we can communicate it, we can manifest it, we can speak it into action. We move down into the D center where we identify, this is at the center of our identity. I know who I am inside the center. If you have definition here, it means that you, you do know who you are and those statements, I am, are very much connected to the throat, the Kirsty, right? So if you have a defined throat, then you will speak the energy of the center that it is connected to. So for Kirsty, this is the G center. So Kirsty, when you are speaking, you are speaking through the certainty of your identity. I am, I know, I am. We have the heart center, which is the ego center or the will. We have the solar plexus, which in human design is the emotional center. We have the spleen, which is, like I said, is one of the core motor centers as well as the solar plexus. Uh, but the spleen is very much all to do with our the knowing of in the body, right? So the spleen is like it, it knows yes or no. When you are a sacral being, like a generator or a manifesting generator, the sacral, you'll get a sacral hit. So if so, something will come into their field, and they will feel the body will, the sacral will, will respond yes, no, very quickly, very instantly. The spleen, like I said, is the center for intuition. And the spleen, if you, we have one splenic um, projector here, and I'm going to talk about the different types of projectors in a sec. The splenic, the spleen, like I said, is all about intuition. <clears throat> it's all to do with instinct. And it's often it houses the seat of fear because it is connected to that primal instinct. And then the root center here is all about adrenaline, cortisol, the nervous system. So we've got a number of different types of projectors. And actually inside of this container, we have four of the five different types of projectors, which is very interesting. The thing with projectors is that you guys are the most varied of all different types, of all of the five different types. You have, there is the most variant. In, in the projector type because there's five different types of projectors, okay? There's definitely not that many different types of generators, manifesting generators, reflectors, or manifestors. And so because there's so many different types of projectors, it means there's so many different ways that your projector energy can show up for you, okay? So we really want to steer clear of um, 
speaking about generalizations when it comes to projectors, apart from the core generalized, well, the core concepts, which they're actually not generalized because they're very true, which is that as a projector, you are here to guide, you are here to lead, you are here, you are, you are here to be recognized for your brilliance, for your gifts, for your genius. You are here to be the lighthouse. And when you learn how to stand in your magnetism, in your in your energy, and simply being your light, that's when the universe, the current of the universe, starts to work for you, right? So your primary authority, primary strategy is to wait for the invitation. As a projector, that is the primary strategy that you are here to experiment with, to wait for the invitation. Now, this is very important because as a projector with limited energy, meaning you don't have access to constantly rechargeable energy because you are a non sacral being and you are here to learn how to recharge your energy, how to work with the peaks and troughs of your natural energy cycle and how to really caretake yourself like a ninja so that you can flourish in your creative gifts, so that you can flourish in the world in your genius. Because you are here to wait for the invitation, a number of different reasons why that is the case and we're going to be talking a lot about this in our time together because it is so important as a projector that you learn why and how to wait for the invitation so essentially <clears throat> because you are here one of the greatest gifts and skills that you have as a projector is the ability to recognize the gift in others it's like you guys can see very very clearly what works beautifully in another person what works beautifully in a system what works beautifully in a in the collective and but likewise the, the opposite is true as well you can see what's not working it's like you guys have a very your aura is very focused very penetrating they call it focused and penetrating and your aura effectively penetrates directly into the g center this bit here the identity center of the person that you are engaging with, that you are talking to or being in their space, that you are in the space with. Now, if you haven't been invited to share your insight, then this can actually feel incredibly invasive. You sharing, because of the very nature of the way that your, that your aura is designed, if you share something in a way that hasn't been invited in, to the person receiving that, it can sometimes be like a physical assault. It can feel sometimes painful. That is because the nature of your energy is so focused. It is so penetrative. It is so precise. And it, boom, it projects. You are a projector. Your energy projects. When you are invited to project, to share something, to share an insight, to offer some feedback, to offer your, you know, to offer something, what happens energetically is that the person that who has invited you, kind of like the G center, the, their aura at their G center makes way and receives. It opens up to receive your projection, your insight, your knowledge, your awareness, your genius. And because you, they have invited you, it's kind of like they've given you permission to enter their field, right? <clears throat> Very important to learn how to slow things down in your life as you wait for the invitation. And I hear all sorts of, I don't want to wait for the invitation. What do I do while I'm waiting for the invitation? That feels really passive. I don't want to be passive. We're going to be spending a lot of time talking about what to do and how to make waiting for the invitation an active waiting rather than a passive waiting. The point is, is that you, you guys really need to learn how to spend time building up your energy building up your body of knowledge, building up your body of work and honing your skills, following your bliss. That is like one of the, the foremost important things for a projector to learn to do is follow their bliss. Do the things that make them feel good. Do the things that make you light, that make that light you up, that set your soul on fire, that ignite all of the definition in your body, right? And the thing with human design is that we have a number of different awareness centers, right? The least important awareness centers are the mental ones. The, they come at the very end. So the wisdom of human design is that the truth, 
your truth is in the body. It is not in the mind. And the biggest thing that a projector will need to work through is like the deconditioning between what their body says is important or good or juicy or nourishing or blissful and what their mind says that they need to do. Okay, so we're going to be really delving into the deconditioning of the body. Now, like I said, there's five different types of projectors. So Kirsty is an emotional projector. We know this because she has an emotional sense of defined, okay? Now, because she's emo an emotional projector, it means that she she has an emotional way, an emotion, and her emotional, she's wired energetically, emotionally, to have a big wave. I'm an emotional manifesting generator, so I know this very well. We have a big peak and a big dip, a big high and a, a big emotional high and a big emotional low, and a big emotional high and a big emotional low. We are naturally designed to be emotional. Doesn't necessarily mean that you might consider yourself to be emotional if you are an emotional projector. So for myself, myself, for myself, I disconnected from my emotions when I was young, right? And I actually completely I froze them out. And so when I learned about being an emotional authority, this, this is called your authority. It's your decision-making tool or your like GPS tool, your inner GPS. <clears throat> when I learned that I was an emotional authority and that I had an emotional way, they say that usually lasts 24 to 48 hours. I was really surprised by that because I didn't feel like I was highly emotional. But the truth was that I had completely disconnected. I had frozen off from my emotions. I had frozen off from any emotion that felt uncomfortable. So my process with the experiment, with the human design experiment, has been learning how to thaw that out and be comfortable, might not be comfortable, be okay with my emotional waves. If you are an emotional authority, it means that there is no certainty in the now. Because at any one point, your body will always remember what it felt like to be at the high of its, the high of its way and the low of the wave. So they say with an emotional authority that you need to wait 24 to 48 hours before making big decisions because you need to move yourself through the emotional wave, right? You need to actually experience, yes, this is a great idea. No, this is a terrible idea. And then wherever you come to after your emotional way, whether that's yes or no, does it feel expansive or contractive? Do you have anxiety when you think about it or do you have peace? It is usually going to guide you to your decision. But you will never know 100% if you are an emotional authority. You will never know 100% because your body always remembers when it was in the low if you are a yes. And if you are a no, your body always remembers when you are at the high. So they say 70 to 80% and you're golden. If you have a 70 to 80% yes as an emotional authority, then you are good to go. Thanks, Kirsty, for letting us look at your chart so, so much. Okay, let's look at beautiful Rachel's chart here. All of you guys are projectors, but you'll notice how different you are. Rachel is a mentally mental projected projector, okay, or a mental projector, which means that she has no definition below the throat. And the only definition she has is the throat connected to the ajna, connected to the crown. For a mental projector, your authority, you have what we call a sounding board authority, which means that you need to speak your process out. You need to speak it out loud, right? It's very important for you to speak to someone, either someone that you deeply trust, who can hear you in a non-judgmental way, and like simply just hold space for you as you move through your process, as you talk yourself through your experience. The other great thing to do, if you don't have anyone around that is that fits that bill that you know you trust deeply, is to record yourself talking and then go back and listen over to it. Very important though for self for mental projectors and self-projected projectors, which we have one here as well, or self-directed projectors, we have one in this group that you walk your th yourself through your process. You talk yourself through your process. Mentally projected projectors, particularly, it's about speaking because you have that defined throat space. And like the more you allow yourself to talk in a space that is non-judged, not judged at all, <clears throat> the more you allow yourself to process and you'll naturally come to a decision through speaking, 
bounding board. Okay. Who's the next person we have? Beautiful Eileen. I didn't know your last name, Eileen, so I just put you as shining light. <laughs> so, um, so Eileen is a splenic projector. All right. So we can see with Eileen, she has a very different chart. Again, she has a lot of definition, a lot of openness, just like Rachel, meaning that in these open centers, you can see here that Eileen, her, her throat center is purely open. There are no active gates, as is her head center purely open there are no active gates which means that in her throat and her head it's like for the open centers we don't need to decondition as much because when we have centers that are defined right but sorry not a, that are not defined that are undefined not open it means that we have gates that are active so Gailene has the 47 and the 17 that are active in her ajna in her g center she has the 46 and the 25 right and inside those gates the gates exist in a spectrum so there will always be the shadow frequency or the not self frequency they call it in human design the not self which is where we're operating in the low frequency of that particular gate or that particular center and the high step the high frequency or the self frequency which is when we're operating in the gift or the city as they call in human design there's always a whole spectrum that we move through emotionally, an emotional spectrum that we move through in all of these different gates. So in the undefined centers where there are active gates, we have more deconditioning to do because of the particular gates that we have active. So Eileen, if you're wanting to decondition, say your ego, let's look here at the identity center. And, you're, and I'm going to be talking to you specifically about this inside your little mini reading. You would be wanting to look at gate 46 and understand what, yeah, what's the frequency, what's the spectrum, what's happening inside of gate 46. You might look at online, you might, you know, type in gate 46 human design or Genki 46. Now, Richard Rudd, who's taken the the um, human design um, gate and really like, like given them a lot, fattened them up, given them a lot more depth, brought them, brought out the full spectrum. We'll talk very much in depth. Hang on one sec. Sorry, just had someone coming in. Let's go back. Uh, he talks a lot about the full spectrum of the the get the different gates, right? So open gates means you, there's no definition whatsoever. There's no gates that are active, and they are pure portals to the divine. They are pure portals to the world around at large around you. So having a lot of open definition means that you have a lot of centers that you are constantly taking in the world that you are feeling the world through when you are defined it's like you're energetically it's inner inner processing rather than externally focusing on things right so the next one that we have Annabelle is a emotional projector we can see here because her emotional center is active and we have Itzel here who is a self-directed projector because this center here is activated, is um, defined. She's a self-projected projector. And very similar to the mentally projected, or mental projectors, the authority for self-projected projectors is to journal. So journaling is very important for self-directed projectors. Because it's all about working through your own emotions before you can find clarity and certainty. Okay, let's keep going. So the final thing that we're going to look at today uh, as we cover the basics of a human design chart are the profile numbers. So you can see down here, every chart has a profile number. Now this number is taken up of, it's taken from the unconscious sun. So you see here, that's the line three and the conscious line one. Now when we're talking about the lines, so every number has the gene key number and then the line attached to it. The lines are connected to the six hex so the six lines in the hexagram and the six different line numbers. So the hexagram in the I Ching. If you you would you would have seen um, potentially seen the I Ching little diagram. And there's six different lines in the profile. Okay, so the profile line it adds a, a much deeper layer of complexity 
to either the gene key or the gate that you are talking about or, or contemplating or your profile. Now, Ra talks about the profile num the profile as being like the cloak, the personality cloak that we adopt in this lifetime, in this body. And being a one plus three, that's, there's 12 different, pro different profile types. Some of them are quite rare. Some of them are quite common, okay? So when you think about the profile types, if you imagine a house, right? If you think in your mind's eye of a house, the foundation upon which that house sits is, is is line one or profile one and the the first pro, the first line first profile is all to do with foundation right line so the second one up is like the family room in the house and that is line two and so line one in human design is called the investigator the circling back a bit the investigator and it's all about like building and investigating foundations, like really understanding the foundation. The second one is called the hermit, right? And the, the second line, if you think about the, the, say the family room in a house, the second profile is all to do with awareness, right? It's all to do with understanding your gift, but being not wanting to, um, be in the be in the environment of other people. So I have a line two as a hermit, and they I'm a hermit opportunist. And a hermit typically is someone who who likes to have downtime, who likes to really come into their own sacred space, and it's very important for them as they recharge their energy. And then the line three is that in between place between the first and the second la, um, la, uh, level of the house, and it's called. Uh, bear with me one sec. Okay, let's keep going. It's called the martyr, okay? So the martyr is all about trial and error. So if you, if you are a one three, which means you are an investigator martyr. Line, like profile numbers one three, typically are the ones that love to do a lot of investigation, a lot of experimentation. They love to know and understand clearly Topics. They deep dive into topics. They're all about learning. They're all about expanding their knowledge, investigating, finding all of the details. And then line three means as a as a marker that it's all about trial and error. It's all about taking what you've learned and experimenting with it, like trying new things. It's called the marker because often it's about like getting things wrong and then learning learning how to do things right because you've trialed and you've, you've gone through that phase of trial and error. Okay, so let's see who else we have here in. Annabelle is a 2-5, so the hermit once again, and then the heretic. So if we think line one is the foundation, line two is that family room in the house. The hermit likes to hide inside but peek out every now and then, like, hide inside but really refine their craft to refine their skills. Line three is called the marker. It's all about trial and error and experimentation. Line four is the four is like the first level, is the second level of the house. And it's called the opportunist. And it's all about the so it's all about socializing. It's all about externalizing. It's all about friendliness and like being in the social environment with people. And then line five is the heretic, right? And that's all about universalizing and projecting and really understanding from that high level consciousness. And then line six is the most transpersonal of all. And it's the role model, which is all to do with being either the optimist or the administrator or the peacekeeper. The line sixes are very interesting because I'm going to talk a bit more about that. We have a couple of line sixes in this group but they, they have a very particular role to play. We're going to talk more about that as we go through the process. Um, the next person here, let's see who this one is. This is Eileen, is a 3 five. So that's Marta Heretic. I'm going to be talking a lot more in depth about what these actually mean. Um, Kirsty is a 3 five as well. And then Rachel is a 3 five too. And Claire, I haven't got Claire, I didn't bring yours up because I think you're the third emotional uh projector so we already had a couple of different emotional projectors so i haven't pulled up your chart yet but let me just have a quick quiz i think i've got it here be curious to see what you are you are six two so you are the six 
in the group, the six two, and we've had more people joining us as well. So um, I feel like this is this is going to bring us to the end of this um, very rudimentary introduction to reading a chart. You, this is purely for your own knowledge, so that when you receive your reading, you're going to have a bit more of an understanding about what it is that I'm talking about. It also means that when you look at another person's chart, you'll be able to understand the very basics as well. Um, and of course, re remembering that as a projector, there's so many different types of projectors and they all have different functions. They all work in different ways. Um, they're all energetically wired very differently. It's the same for all of the types. There's so many different variations within human design. But as we go through our time together, you're going to really be able to understand and embody the, the very spe the specifics of your design, right? And it's experimentation. This is all about experimenting, trial and error, getting things wrong, getting it right, bringing in light curiosity, not being too serious, playing, following your bliss. That should be your motto as a projector. What do I feel like doing today that is in alignment with my bliss? Because it's all about your energy cultivation. You have a very powerful but finite energy. And when it runs out, you need to actively recharge it, right? So learning how to be really take care of your self-care. Um, the big thing to remember is that as a projector, you guys are born for these times. You have a very powerful ability to see the collective at its highest, at its highest frequency. You have a very powerful ability to see what's working, what's not working, to systemize. You guys typically master a, like master a craft or master a skill and then become known for that. So a great question to start thinking about is what body of work or what system have I mastered? Is it a modality? Is it a particular way of living? Um, my mum is a projector and she's, she was an, a diabetes nurse educator and she worked in diabetes for 30 years. She's completely mastered that area of work for her and she became known for that. Right, so once people know what it is that you are masterful at, that's when you are receiving the recognition that you so deeply long for. What I haven't mentioned today is the two emotions connected to um, the projector spectrum. So the not self emotion is bitterness, right, and the self, um, the high self or higher self emotion is success and satisfaction. So when you're not being fully recognized, which is what you're here to be, you're here to recognize you can end up feeling bitter. You can end up feeling not seen, not heard, not, not recognized for who you truly uniquely are. When you are recognized, you feel successful and satisfied, right? The energy of success is very important to the projector and it's not success as we think it is. It's not like monetary or financial success or wealth. It's feeling successful within yourself and that's going to be different for each and every one of you. So I hope this is giving you some food for thought, lots to think about. Please drink some water, let it all land and integrate. We're going to be going through this piece by piece. I'm so excited to have you on board for this amazing journey together. Um, I'm excited to give you all your readings and then for us to start playing in the experimentation phase throughout our time together. Alrighty, I'll see you in Voxart. Take care. Bye for now.